Mirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksura Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Enama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistham Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapantitam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrutya Naram Chayeva Narottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Udhiraye Nasta Praye Suabhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Rabhavati Naistiki Guru Ve Gaur Chandraya Sri Radhikaya Tadalaye Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tada Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Krupa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Hare Krishna everybody and welcome to this session of Srimad Bhagavatam stories. So let us all go to Namisharanya. Uh, if not physically, by mentally we can go there where Sutta Goswami is describing Srimad Bhagavatam to 88,000 sages there. Okay. So here, now upon asking questions uh, by the sages, the leader name was Sauna Karusi. He was asking the questions on behalf of all the sages. And uh, we were discussing yesterday that the second question that they ask is about what is the essence of the scripture. So, So, uh, excuse me. Yeah, so here, uh, yeah, the second question that Savana Karusi asked on behalf of all 88,000 sages, the Rusi is there, assembled there, uh, that what is the essence of the scripture? And Sudha Goswami was replying them. So I told them while he was replying, he emphasized the importance of bhakti. We were discussing that point. And then we came to this slide here where you can see that the best example is here of Yasodamata binding the uh, Lord Krishna uh, to illustrate the importance of bhakti. So we will learn this pastime and when we go to 10 Kanto also in detail. But right now, I will just tell you the story in brief. Okay. So this incident of binding Krishna with the mortar, you can see that wooden mortar that happened uh, on the day of Deepavali. You know, according to the Hindu calendar, Hindu calendar, the last day of the year is Diwali. They are also called Deepavali. So this incident or this pastime happened on that day. So one time Mother Yasoda thought herself to churn butter for Krishna. Why? Because Krishna was stealing from uh, Gopi's house, you know, and the Gopis were complaining to Yasoda Mata. So Yasoda Mata thought that, you know, uh, let me make butter myself. So I'll make very nice butter for him. So that way he will not steal butter from somebody else's house, you know. So that was his idea, her idea. So uh, when she started churning butter, she was singing the pastimes of Krishna also. So Krishna 
uh, was sleeping, but then when he heard her mother's voice, he woke up. And when he woke up, he found that he, his mother is not with him on the bed. So he just get down from the bed and then went to the place where the mother was churning the butter. So then he told his mother that, mother, I'm hungry, please feed me like that, you know. So Mother Yasoda, being very uh, loving mother, uh, he began feeding him her breast milk. In the meantime, what happened that she saw that the milk was boiling over on the stove that she put on the stove to heat it up. You know, that was also for Krishna, actually. She wants to make some sweet from that milk. So, uh, and that milk was so important because that milk is like uh, some of the very selected cow's milk was there for Krishna, you know. So she wanted to save that milk there over the stove because it was boiling over. So she put down Krishna from her lap and went to save that milk. So meantime what happened, here Krishna was angry because he was not yet satisfied with drinking breast milk from his mother. So uh, what he saw around, there was a sm small stone was lying over there. So he picked up that stone and he hit the part in which Mother Yasada was churning the butter. So that was all like, uh, you know, the curds, uh, you know, I was kind of a, so it, it, the part broke and everything was spread around, you know. So then he thought that what will happen, you know, so he was kind of a frightened and then he ran away from that place and he was hiding himself, you know. Uh, so, when Yasoda came back to that place, you know, uh, he knew that this work is done by Krishna only because he was not there present also. So he thought it is his work that he did that thing, you know. But then again, here mother, you know, kind of, has, so she said, now let me do some punishment to Krishna, you know. She took a stick and went around to find him in the house here, you know, so and you're hiding somewhere. So she went to find him like that. And when Krishna saw, he was frightened. Like, oh, my mother will, you know, he stick to me like that. And so then he just uh, ran away. He was trying to run away, you know, and Mother Yasoda was also trying to uh, run behind him to catch him, you know, but Finally, when he got caught, you know, then she threw away the stick. Uh, rather than hitting the stick, she decided to bind him. Because what happened, she, he was so frightened that uh, Esoda was uh, in fear that he may run away from the home. So, but if I keep him binding, you know, here, then he will be safe, sort of. So thinking that he's binding it, uh, Krishna here. Uh, okay, and there is uh, more detailed pastime we will discuss uh, when we study the tenth canto. But this is just I would like to mention about this small brief inf introductory information about this incident where Mother Yasoda is binding Krishna uh, to illustrate the importance of bhakti because here. Krishna cannot say that, oh, I'm supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna. You cannot bind me like that, you know, something like that. Because he is sub, uh, you know, servient to uh, his mother. And is, so it's like it shows vatsalya means uh, kind of a paternal, maternal love, you know, that uh, you can see there uh, for a woman to have that for a child, you know, like that. So bhakti is the essence of all the scripture. That is what Sutta Goswami wants to emphasize, you know. And um, we just uh, learned this story uh, as an example to that. 
then also Sutta Goswami describes uh, there are three kinds of devotees. For example, the, who worship the Lord, you know, who do the deity worship. So one of them is like uh, he has material desire and he approaches Krishna to fulfill his desire, you know, and he respects the temple deity and everything is nice but he does not respect the devotees. So that kind of devotee is kind of an, the neophyte or a beginner kind of devotee. Uh, it's uh, Sutta Goswami gives the definition of that uh, devotee. And then the middle class, sort of a second category of devotees, like he generally wants to serve the Lord, you know. So that's why he builds friendship with those of similar mentality and he is compassionate to the devotee that we talked about beginning levels you know and avoid those who do not believe in god so that that is the nature or characteristics of a, a sort of a secondary little higher level of devotee but the topmost devotee uttam like you know is like who he sees lord everywhere and he is present in all respect so that kind of devotee is kind of an, uh, considered, uh, you know, he see God in everywhere sort of, because in a way, the God is a super soul, Krishna is a super soul in everybody's heart. So he developed that vision, you know, by practicing devotional service, by practicing bhakti, uh, he, uh, de he develops that kind of uh, uh, quality by which he will be able to see Lord Krishna everywhere and he is called Uttam devotee like that. Now, next thing Sutta Goswami discusses about the who is like Bhagavan, Bhagavan or who should we call Bhagavan? Yeah? Or how do you recognize Bhagavan, that who is Bhagavan? Because there are so many nowadays telling that I am Bhagavan, you know, I'm God. Bhagavan means God, you know. So, Let's then Suddha Goswami uh, briefly describes the uh, definition of Bhagavan, that who is Bhagavan. So here uh, the different acharyas give different commentaries. Here I will tell you uh, that how Parasar Muni says, how Jiva Goswami says like that. So they uh, define the word Bha Bhagavan, the B is the first letter of that word. B means maintainer. Okay, means who's maintained. And like Krishna is maintaining everybody, you know. Then G means the leader of the devotees. Means he's like supreme. Okay. And V means Vas or Vasati in Sanskrit. It means in English to reside. So, because all material element and all living entities reside in the Supreme Lord. So Lord is addressed by the syllable Va like that. Because Lord says in Bhagavad Gita also, you know, that everything comes from me, you know, and I am the creator of everyone, you know, that kind of thing. So in that respect, uh, the Va is being used. Now, the whole word Ba, Ga, and Va, Ba, Ga, Bhaga means also opulence. So, and, and there are six kinds of opulences uh, which we'll see in this slide here. Wealth, fame, beauty, knowledge, renunciation, and strength. So these are six kinds of opulences, okay? is described in the scripture. Uh, wealth, means having a lot of opulences, right? So many riches, wealth. Strength means uh, very uh, brave, you know, uh, he possesses like uh, these very, uh, he's very powerful in a, in a way, you know, he can do like anything. So that is strength. Fame is where become famous, men become famous, beauty, that you know that Krishna is all beautiful. Knowledge, he got the knowledge, he gives the knowledge to Arjuna in the form of Bhagavad Gita and renunciation. 
so uh, this is how our guru varg the spiritual masters predecessor acharyas they say that one means uh, one who possesses bhagavan right so bhaga bhaga means opulence and one means one who possesses so the vyasadev's father whose name is parasar he defines bhagavan bhagavan as one who possesses these six opulences to the fullest extent you know so there is a verse also aishwarya sya samagrasya like that but i will just tell you briefly that the lord krishna is possesses all these six opulences in fullness it's not like well the i mean you may find some rich person in this material world but you know he may not be equally wealthy than krishna because if we see krishna's past time in dwarka he got 16108 palaces you know uh for the for his queens and dwarka you can see that it was so rich uh uh city that he was living in and he created that through the agency of uh, this uh, uh the one guy who is an architect in spirit uh, you know heavenly planet he uses them to make this dwarka like that and so in general sense we can see that uh the definition of that one who possesses also in full action so there is nobody if we look around there is no fine except krishna who possesses all the six opulences in fullest extents that's why he is called god you know and therefore krishna is the only bhagwan you know nobody is equal to or greater than him you know in bhagavad gita he says that there is nobody equal to and greater what i mean there is nobody someone equal to him so what to speak about even greater than him but there is no there is nobody equal to him uh, you know that is said in bhagavad gita also and also if you find in bhagavad gita if somebody have heard it or knew about it that we will find the word when he recites the shloka many times we see bhagavan uvacha and we know that that bhagwan is krishna why because everybody knows that gita was spoken by lord krishna to arjuna so that bhagwan is krishna himself okay so we have to remember this that krishna is bhagwan and nobody else is bhagwan you know somebody say bhagwan then you may have to you know ask him that can you you know here you can see that in picture krishna is holding the whole govardhan mountain so you can say somebody that can you hold like even 40 kilo of weight you know like that so if you try to check if somebody says that he is bhagwan and if you try to check with him that way then you will understand that he does not possess that kind of strength but here from all the pictures you can see that krishna is very famous also he is so most beautiful you know we the other day we saw him, we recite the verse barha pidam which describe the beauty of krishna there is only one but there are so many uh, shlokas in bhagavatam where krishna's beauty is described very nicely and as far as the knowledge is concerned uh, we can see that uh he is giving that bhagavad gita knowledge which is the bhagavad gita is the essence of all vedic literature and that is what krishna is imparting that knowledge to arjuna when he was confused what to do you know because the fight was amongst the uh, family members you know his cousin brothers so that way he is also knowledgeable uh, about pronunciation uh there is another example that krishna performed his past time leela in vrindavan for approximately 11 years you know and maybe some days but when 
uh, a Krura came on the order of Kaunsa to get the Krishna and Balaram from Vrindavan to Mathura. At that time, even Krishna was so much in love with all the Vrajvasis, I mean the people of Vrindavan, like elder Gopas, you know, elder Gopis, young Gopis, young boys, even all the cows, all the other animals, the plant trees, you know, everybody, uh, they were uh, in love with Krishna and Krishna loved them too, you know, but, and he was very happy there. But when uh, a Krura came there, came there to get them, so he has to perform his Leela also in Mathura. So he immediately renounced everybody, you know, because sometimes if we are attached so much, it will not be easy to renounce that kind of situation. Or if you are so happy from that situation, you don't want to let go that moment of enjoyment and then go away, you know, like that. So, but Krishna, without thinking anything, also knowing that he has to perform his more pastime, he has to go there. So, because uh, the reason he was going there, it was time to kill Kamsa also. So, we will learn that as we go along because. Uh, we're all we're going to learn about Krishna's pastimes in this Srimad Bhagavatam in a story form. Anyway, so now then, next thing is that so the Goswami describes is about uh, the uh, how one should attain perfection in the human form of life. You know, we got this human form which is very rare attain. It is Sudurlava, it is said in uh, some slokas in Bhagavatam. It is not very easy to get that human birth. After so many pious activity, we get human birth, you know, because when a person born, he becomes old, disease, death, and then he takes another birth. If he doesn't fulfill his mission as a human form to go to the spiritual world. Actually, our goal in human life is to achieve the spiritual world and uh, develop love of God and go there and eternally we can serve him. You know, I mentioned the other day, there are six types of bodies, right? Which includes this human body also, but there are other bodies like fish, aquatics, you know, the living entity that lives in water, you know, like fish and crocodiles and whatnot. And then there are living entities which doesn't move, which is trees and plants like that, you know. So that is another body. Insect, like serpent, inspect, you know, bees and all this kind of thing. They fall in the third category of body. And then are so kind, several kinds of birds there. Uh, also, there are several kinds of animals there. And then the human body. So there are six types of bodies described in our scripture, you know, in Padma Purana especially. So the question is then how one should attain perfection in the human form of life while we got this human form. So uh, there is a, uh, so the Goswami answers that, that all activities should be centered on Krishna to make the human life perfect. That is how He's telling them, you know, that we have to make all activities, uh, you know, that we perform should be around Krishna. In other words, you know, if we always hear about Krishna, you know, that one activity hearing about Krishna, talk about Krishna, we can talk about Krishna to our friends, we can remember him. If we have heard about him, that sometime we remember him. Oh, okay, I have heard about Krishna like this. He was lifting the Govardhan hill. He was doing this in Vrindavan like that, you know. So we can remember his pastime. Then we worship him, you know, uh, many ways. Uh, and then we always try to serve his dear devotees also. So these are certain activities that we can include in our daily life, right? So we will begin to feel something very special happening, uh, you know, in our heart. When we do this thing, everything we do with Krishna, you know, 
hearing about him, remembering about him, talking him, worshiping him, serving his dear devotees, you know. So by if we do that thing, it will give a joy to our heart and we will begin to feel that, oh, I love Krishna. Like everything, uh, our activities are around Krishna, then we will begin to love Krishna and we feel from our heart that, oh, I love Krishna like that. I just want to serve him always. You will get that kind of, a, you know, attitude that now I want to serve Krishna. All I want is to hear his glories, hear his messages, you know. So at that moment, Lord Krishna who resides in, in every, our heart, he is a super soul. He will also help us, you know. He will reciprocate same way. He says, e prapadyante. Means he says that he reciprocate. As we reciprocate with Krishna, as we want to, he will also reciprocate with his. That is his nature, you know, to give uh, pleasure to his devotees. So by doing that, um, then it will clean our heart, you know, of many impurities in our heart we have. What are the impurities in our heart? Unwanted desire, we have a anger, we have a envy, we have a greed. You know, these are all kinds of impurities in our heart. And if we reciprocate Krishna like this, then all impurities will go away, you know. So the conclusion is that, that Krishna should be the object of our everyone's glorification, uh, you know. Oh, that we can talk about about him, we can hear about him from somebody, you know. So, like uh, this is like, you know. Uh, now the way of living social life is is given here. Four varnas and four ashram in this slide. You see, ashram. Varna means we can say like brahmacharya. So in the beginning stage childhood stage that is the stage we are in and then we grew older uh, we become grahastha and then after we become grahastha after 50 years or so we become one prastha means we're trying to detach from the family life and then at the end we take sannyas so this is kind of an, a social way of living life normally suggested in the scripture you know so normally as i told you that you are People are supposed to live like 100 years. So it, we have to have certain rules and regulations. Then after 25, we get married. We have grahastha life. We have some other duties that is also described in disasters. But then after 50 years, you know, we have our own children. So when the children can take care of themselves, we try to detach from the family activities, you know. Uh, so that is like one prastha stage. But then at the end, we want to do something good for our soul. You know, so the sannyas is the next ashram, last ashram. That is like a social way of living life. But if you do bhakti, you can surpass all these things also. And then another way of ashram is like uh, uh, the ashram I already have described. Uh, Brahm, uh, Brahm, uh, like Brahmacharya, Grahastha, and Vanya, uh, Van Prastha and Sanyas, but Varna are like uh, categories of people that we find in this society. There are some Brahmin, there are some Kshatriya, Vaisya, and Sudra. There are four kinds of Brahmanas, I mean, uh, uh, division like that. So Brahmanas kind of, an, uh, we can define them as a, in modern age, like intelligent person, you know, who kind of a, want to rule. Uh, the thing, you know, and a Kshatriya is like a protector. They are like protection for the country. Vaisyas, they are like the uh, cow maintainer or they do the farming and uh, also the vapari or like these people who are doing some business, they fall in that category, Vaisya also. And then the Sudra means uh, those who are at uh, category where they doesn't have much knowledge, they can serve all these three kind of people, Brahman, Kshatriya, and Vaishya, and that is how they maintain their life. So this kind of an, uh, give you some idea about the social thing, reformation, but, you know, in order to get to the spiritual level, you have to live like uh, in this Varanasram system and can focus 
the mind on Krishna, uh, chanting uh, Krishna's name, you know, and because Krishna invested his holy name with all his potencies, and uh, there are no restrictions in chanting the holy name. Uh, that is the benefit of chanting the holy name. Uh, there are so many benefits of chanting the holy name, we will discuss some time. But I will just mention one point, effect of chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. So I'll just give you one example that you see here rising sun. So as the rising sun immediately dissipates all of darkness, so the holy name of the Lord, if chanted one without offense, can dissipate all the reactions of a living being, sinful life. So the holy name is like auspicious, means as you can see in the morning when the sun rises, the darkness of the night goes away. So similarly, when we chant the holy name, you know, uh, it dissipates the uh, reactions of our sinful life that we may have done. So that is the importance of chanting the holy name of the Lord. So with this, I will end it here and take questions. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for a wonderful class. I request to uh, all of you, please ask one by one uh, question. So I announce the name, you have to unmute himself and ask the question. So first is Shlok. Shlok, please unmute yourself and ask question if you want. Um, my, I have two questions. I have one from last time. Is that, do souls ever die? No, soul is eternal. And my other question, um, my other question, you you just answered. So yeah, never mind. Thank you. The next one is Tejas. Tejas. Okay, the next one is Ananya. Ananya, please ask your question, Ananya. So, so uh, my question uh, was, um, my question was that, like, is there, um, like, for the six, like, um, uh, I forgot the six openings, I think, um, when no, no one is like Krishna with strength and knowledge and the others. Uh, is there anyone else that has, um, any one of those six openings? Any one of the six? Well, I didn't get the quite your question. Can you repeat it? Uh, it's in one of the slides. One of the slides? Okay. Yes. One of the opulence here? Uh, yes, this one. Is there anyone with wealth, fame, beauty, knowledge, renunciation, and strength? Yeah. Like, is there anyone else with one of them? Okay, so what is your question? So, is there anyone else besides Krishna who has one of these six opal lenses? Yes, there may be somebody who may have one of these, but that is not to the fullest extent that Krishna has. Krishna has all these six in a complete form, in fullest extent. But somebody in the material world, maybe richest person may be there, right? But he may not possess other qualities, right? Other opulence, like uh, beauty or strength or something like that, you know. So everybody is sort of an incomplete in some sense. But Krishna is the only one who possesses all six of them and that too, complete way. Okay, Prabhuji, 
Thanks, Hare Krishna. No, Hare Krishna. Okay, next person. Amit, Amit, please unmute yourself. Rabuji, what's the meaning of Vaishya? Oh, Vaishya is the category of a person who does the farming and business. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The next one is Kajal Shaha. Please unmute yourself. When Naruto came in the same road, when the, the, the two, the two, the one, the my Griva and Narakuzeva was drinking beer, then. I, I didn't get your question. Can you repeat it? When Narada came in the same road where my Griva and Naraku Veva is, is drinking beer, he, Narada cursing the Pitu trees in Vrindavan. No, if, some, if somebody can understand the question, can you please repeat that for me? Narada's, Narada Narada came in the same road when the 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 Nargriva and my my Griva. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Nalakuvar and Mani Griva. Okay. That was the past time. Yeah. After this year. Yeah. Okay. So we we will learn that past time also. Yeah. Krishna liberated them. Yeah, you moving you, you you moving fast forward now. We will come to that sometime. Okay, thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You're welcome. Kartik, please unmute yourself. Kartik. Um Prabhuji, I have seven questions. Okay. Some of them may not work. So my first question is do you guys rotate? Yugas what? Yugas rotate. Yes, yugas rotate. Just like spring, fall, summer season, you know, in a year, right? In a year, you have a four or six seasons, right? They also rotate. Yeah. So similarly, yugas rotate. Uh, is this the first time yugas rotated or did yugas rotate a lot? Oh, we have rotated so many times. We, we don't know. Because oh. it is it is perpetual cycle going on. So nobody can tell how many times it it has rotated. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uh, third question is why did God create bad if we're not supposed to do bad? God is what? Why did God create bad if we're not supposed to do bad? Oh, why God creates something that we are not supposed to? No, why did God create bad if we're not supposed oh, to? Oh, why do create bad? Okay. So, for God, good and bad is equal. For him, it doesn't make difference for front or back, good or bad, you know. Uh, it is on our side that we take it as a bad. Okay. In, in this creation, we think that it is bad. You know, so mm -hmm. it is our mentality in, in Krishna's eyes in an absolute way, it's very philosophical term, but uh, in Krishna's eyes, everything is same. He doesn't uh, have in absolute term, you know, uh, for Krishna, uh, everything is same, and there is no for he. He, he will not distinguish from good to bad. It is we that we distinguish from good to bad. Okay. Because he is spiritual personality and we are material. You know, mm -hmm. he, is, he, is a, he has a quality of Sat, Chit and An. Sat means eternity. Chit means full of knowledge. And uh, Anam is like, is blissful. So, Krishna could not have anything bad. You know, or he cannot... You know, the good and bad creation is uh, 
that is our conception not his conception okay and um does everything change when we rotate to the next yuga everything change means according to that dharma yuga everything will be accordingly you know what it's supposed to be like satya yuga people live 100000 years right they have to do meditation like that when the yug changes then yug dharma means whatever religion for that dharma is most prominent of course chanting of holy name is in each and every uh, yuga is, is there it is eternal you know but it is most uh, recommended in kali yuga uh, depending on uh, counting on the characteristics of kali yuga you know um will kingdoms come back in so uh, when we rotate can, to yuga who can come back will kingdoms come back if we rotate to satya yuga next kingdom what yeah you mean kingdom means like the you talking about a palace palace yeah i mean yeah everything will be in that proper thing you know going on and and, and it, actually it is like going on you know because you know there are so many universes we will learn about something create how he created this cosmic manifestation at that time you know more about it but there are many universes you know not only one so this kind of thing is perpetual going on which is very difficult for us to conceive that's why it is called inconceivable you know lord creation uh we'll just get a glimpse of it we will not be able to understand it fully also did someone who was dwaraka before krishna did somebody who was in what dwarka no did someone who was dwaraka before krishna did what is dwar i didn't get that one prabhu ji dwarika place dwarika okay okay so what about that very come oh no is is the dwapar yuga uh, the krishna had that uh, and it is now you can see that the original dwarka is submerged into the ocean what we see dwarka is there in unmanifested form did sukadev go swami grow in his um, mom's womb Sukadev Goswami grew in his mother's womb. Yes. How long? Uh, he came out when he was twelve years old. Did Did Sukadev Goswami fit in his mom's tummy? Yeah. So okay. he was still small. Well, he stayed twelve years long, but. by inconceivable potency it's not that uh, his mother's womb became so big but when he appears he all of a sudden looks like 12 year boy and then he turned to 16 and went to the forest like that okay thank you prabhu ji yeah. it doesn't that uh, his mother's womb grow so big you know but uh, when he appeared he all of a sudden you know he looks like a 12 year boy so that's how we know that he spent 12 years in his mother's womb thank you prabhu ji the next question is for sanvi sanvi please unmute yourself and ask question sanvi hari krishna prabhu ji one question yes how don't souls die the soul never dies it's just the body becomes dead soul when, when somebody dies soul is eternal soul lives from the body and according to his activities that he has performed he get another body or if he have done the bhakti he can go to the spiritual planet or if he has done some good activities he will go to heavenly planet the next is kanai kanai please unmute yourself kanai v 
Um, yeah, so my question was, does the soul evolve after each birth? Because after each life you learn, during each life you learn something new. Does, yes. that, does that knowledge stay in the dead body or does it go into the soul and very good. evolve? Very good. very good question. I'll explain it to you. Okay, we have a two bodies. Okay, gross body which you see, which is made of earth, water, fire, air and ether. You know, the gross body that we see. Uh, there is a subtle body which is made up of mind, intelligence and ego. So the soul is covered by these two bodies, subtle body and then the gross body that we see. Subtle body you cannot see because it is made up of mind, intelligence and ego. So mm -hmm. at the time of somebody passing away, at somebody's death, subtle body carries the soul to the next body. And what happened, like you're asking about the, what we have learned in this life. Okay, whatever we have learned in this life will go away. Only if you have learned something spiritual that will come with you. Okay. okay. So if you are a doctor in this life, that doesn't mean that uh, next life you will become a doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you may go to different species also, not necessarily that you will come in a human species. You may go to bird species, animals, depending on your karma also. And if you have done a good thing, you will go to the heavenly planet and okay. enjoy the demigod. And if you have done super good, you know, uh, then, uh, or spiritual, if you have developed spiritual uh, progress, then you will go to the Vaikuntha planet. There are so many Vaikuntha planet. From where you go, you don't have to come back from there to material planet to get, a, to get in the cycle of birth and death. So whenever you come to this material planet, you have to go through this, you know, because everything has its lifespan. Even the fish, elephant, tiger, plant, trees, you know, all these things. They have a certain kind of, certain type, certain many of years that they have, you know, but after <laughs> that they have to go to, uh, you know, uh, pass through this, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a natural evolution in a way that depending on your karma, you know. Uh, suppose somewhere take birth in a, in, a, in, a, in a fish form, then maybe, you know, evolve from that to, uh, you know, bird form or animal form like that, you know, and then come to the human form like that. So that it is like 8.4 million species, you know, species means bodies, you know, different bodies we inhabit. And the people will are transmigrating from one body to another body till they get liberated. You know, you got that? Yes. Okay. <laughs>